This is Gary Penny, also known as GP. Gary used to be my old group Iron Man account, her normal account, over a year ago, and in that process I cleaned out the entire account, leaving Gary with zero GP to his name. But as they say, the comeback is always greater than the setback, so in this series, Gary Penny will rebuild with the ultimate end goal of achieving a max cash stack. Last episode we started off at the Nightmare Zone and hit 90 defense. After that we headed straight into the main grind of the episode to defeat 250 of each of the God Wars generals, totaling 1000 God Wars bosses defeated. But at the end we alluded to jumping into potentially the most profitable grind so far of the series, so let's get started with that today in episode number 4. Back in episode number 2, I completed the quest beneath Curse Sands, allowing me access to the Tombs of Amasket raid. And that is exactly where we're going to begin this video. The raid works on an invocation system, allowing you to increase the difficulty of the raid, and with that also increasing the chance of getting a unique. Now speaking of uniques, here are all the items this raid has to offer, ranging from 3 million in value with a light bearer, to 1.5 billion in the Tumican Shadow. I will be doing most of the raid solo, however the raid can be completed with a team up to 8 players. Just like last time, we have been doing a lot of herb runs while editing, and this haul is pretty big. 6.2 million. Pretty good start to the episode. And now adding this to our bank, it gives our herb tab a 22.2 million value, and our overall bank value is 484 million at the start of this episode, but with Tombs of Amasket being our goal, hopefully this is going up a lot this time. I had to make 4 big purchases for this grind, which is the Bandos Tassets, Bandos Godsword, Basilisk Jaw and Hydra Leather. And the jaw and the leather we have to make on our own into the item, so let's go ahead and do that. First off, we're going to be combining the Basilisk Jaw with the Helm of Natus Knot to make the Natus Knot Phase Guard, which gives very good melee strength, prayer bonus and defensive stats. And honestly, it looks awesome. It's basically just an upgraded version of the Natus Knot Helmet. And of course, we were only able to do this because we completed the Fremenic Exiles in episode number 2. Two. And secondly, because we have Dragon Slayer 2 completed, we can make the Ferocious Gloves, which is the best melee gloves in the entire game. And this is irreversible, but it's quite a good investment, as it gives 14 strength bonus over the 12 from Barrow's Gloves. And so it is time to get into the actual raid. This is my completed melee, ranged, and magic setup. I'm going to be starting off with the Tombs of Mascot. If we get some massively valuable drops, I can always upgrade a couple of items here and there. But to begin, this is what I'm going to be using. Now, when it comes to invocations, I want to start off very slowly at a 200 invocation normal raid because i need to get back into this again i haven't done tombs of Amasket in a long time but i've already set up the presets for a 250 300 experts and a 350 experts and an absolutely lovely plugin is the toa point overlay which at all times shows you exactly what your chances are of getting a purple at the end of the raid this will make it very easy for you guys to see the chance increase as my raid level increases as well but let's start off with a 200 raid as i venture into the tombs i feel like it's only fitting that i have an amazing looking mouse mat to go with the grind which is why this video is sponsored by creator crafted all creator crafted products are officially licensed by jagex and come in limited edition and themed releases and definitely makes for the perfect decoration for your gaming space like i mentioned earlier I have the Tombs of Amasket mouse mat on its way to me as we speak, but some of my favorite products are the Elysian Spirit Shield, Corrupted Twisted Bow, and Infernal Cape LED lights. Also, if you're in the US, for purchases of $150 or more, you get free shipping, and if you're not from the US, your shipping is still highly discounted. Creator Crafted is an amazing support to the RuneScape community for both its creators and its players. So make sure you go to the link in the description and use the coupon code ALONE10 to get 10% off site-wide. And as the products are limited in stock, make sure you get whatever entices you before it's gone. Again, thank you so much to Creator Crafted for sponsoring this video. I actually don't want this video to be a guide on how to do Tombs of a Masket because there are so many small details and information you need to know before you can actually complete this raid but I will link a guide that I think is really good for beginners at the top of the description, so if you want to know how to do this raid, click on that. Definitely not my proudest Baba, almost died twice on a 200 invocation, but I'll get into it. Definitely have to get some rust off, but uh, you can now see on my loot tracker that I have 0.45% chance of getting a unique and 0.01% for the pets. 
You know what? Kind of proud of myself. Had no issues at all with Kefri. But now, as the second boss is down, it's time to talk supply drops. After you kill the second boss and before you fight the final boss, you will get a supply drop. First, we have the Tears of Elidness and Nectar, which is just Super Stores and Saradomin Brews. We then have the Blessed Crystal Scarab and Silk Dressing. When used, the Scarab slowly restores prayer points and the Silk Dressing restores HP. This is done over time. Next, we have the Ambrosia and the liquid adrenaline. Drinking an ambrosia will instantly heal you to full HP and prayer, plus overhealing both by 20. This makes it probably the most overpowered potion in the entire game. And secondly, the liquid adrenaline reduces the special attack drain by any weapon by 50% for its 150 second duration. And lastly, we have the smelling salts, which essentially is an overload potion, boosting your stats to their maximum values and constantly restoring them every 15 seconds as well as restoring run speed. And the supplies that you get offered is kinda random, but in this case, having some more Sourdome Bruce restores and also getting the overload potion in smelling salts is definitely the way to go. And that is Krondis defeated. Honestly, in this invocation, Krondis is kind of a ridiculously easy boss. Playing absolute matrix here, avoiding all of the white balls on the um, shall not be named face of this Arca fight. And that is the last mini boss completed. Let's go into the last one. You know, normally I wouldn't be too excited about getting a 200 invocation KC, and getting it in 37 minutes is uh, not something to be very proud of. But because I haven't done this in a long time, and it's the first raid in the entire series and this entire account's history. I am pretty excited. We have a 2.58% chance of getting a purple and oh my god, look at all these combat achievements. There are so many of them, but uh, let's see. Can we get lucky on our first raid of the entire series? And the answer is no. We had a roughly 1 in 38 chance of getting something here. And my plan is going to be to keep doing some of these normal raids and then jump into the experts when I get more comfortable. Now, we're not quite out of it yet because there are two items that I still really want from the normal chest. The first one being the Thread of Elidness, which adds one additional slot to my rune pouch, which is super useful at a lot of different areas of the game. And the second one is the Jewel of the Sun, which is quite a lot more rare, and it's an attachment to the Keris Partisan that we got from Beneath Curse Sands, which is mainly useful for its special attack. Draining 50 prayer points and 75% of your special attack energy to fully heal you instantly and give you a 20% overheal. So these two items are the best ones I could get from the normal chest, and let's see what the first chest is going to give us in our Tombs of a Masked Grind. And the answer is none of the two. We have up to a 250 raid, and uh, if I can get one last hit in, that is a completion of the second raid for some combat achievements. Are we going to get lucky? Never lucky. As has been apparent from the beginning of the series, my combat stats are unfortunately not maxed, and I'm currently working on attack as I'm falling behind on that quite a lot, and it's a very useful skill. And that is now 87 attack. I'm probably going to be getting a lot of those this video. Let's go. That is the Threads of Elidness and also a cache of runes for my collection log. That's just a bunch of runes, basically. But that allows me now to make the 4-slot rune pouch. Let's go ahead and do that. I think I need a needle for it. As I'm using thralls for this grind, I only need 3 types of runes. But for the future grinds I'm going to be doing, this is a very useful upgrade. So let's go ahead and make it. It also looks a lot better with the white at the bottom and the blue tint to it. And now you can add 4 different types of runes to one rune pouch. You can see there's one vacancy in it. And I can put anything I want here, for example, death runes. But as I said, as I'm using thralls, I only need three types of runes. So for now, not very useful. I think that's good enough for practice. I think I'm ready to actually hop into the expert raids after this one. We have now 10 completions in normal mode and we have not seen a purple and this raid is no different. Let's hop into it. Let's start doing experts. If you are curious, this is all the invocations I'm going to be using for my 300 expert raid. I believe these are the easiest ones. I have a lot on Baba as those are all pretty simple. So let's get into it actually did not die first attempt we completed an expert raid that gives me a lot of confidence to keep doing expert raids for the rest of the video that's one casey done now and let's see if we're going to be rewarded and no white light well it is to be expected i guess can't get one too easily 
But loot is a lot of seeds and cactus spine. Right after I completed my first expert raid, I was invited by my good friends Krebus and Max Nick to a few three-man runs. Now essentially in Trio, everyone has their own point system, and as long as one person in the groups hits a unique, the chest at the end will contain a rare item. Now who gets the unique for us doesn't really matter, as we will split the profits evenly between us, with one exception. If someone gets the light bearer, as it's currently only worth 3 million GP, so it's not much of a split. No! White oh my lights. god. That's so scam. Oh, I we had failed to beat the time? What? No way. Oh, we got normal raid. I didn't even think about that. Oh, oh yeah. We, we should on. have definitely used the fortune. Oh, that's actually bad. Oh my god. White light again. Probably. Oh, oh we got we a got purple. Got hey, look at that. Spin. Let's Come go. On. It's my it? name. It's uh, my name! It's Grievous' first The fucking leech gets 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 the I'm gonna go check I'm my loot this. first. Okay. The carry? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Grievous is the baller. I'm the carry. Oh, well, my good God. luck. The dry streak has finally been broken. It's been so, fire. just to clarify, just to clarify, if, if there's a ring or a ward, we don't split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get to keep it. Uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully it's not a ring or a ward. Oh, I've been waiting this whole time. It is a. Oh, no. it's a ring. Three GP. I'm keeping it, man. <laughs> the worst item. The dry streak has been broken, but what? at what cost? At what cost, It's always yeah. nice to see purples, though. But we had to go for the back-to-back. -back. We completed another expert raid, and unfortunately, we got nothing this time. But if I do get a chance to do group raids again, I will do them, even though they are a bit more annoying. Primarily because some of the bosses like Akka and Baba becomes a lot more annoying with even additional mechanics when doing it in a team. But it's still, regardless, a nice time with some friends. I feel like now is a good time to introduce the second activity of this episode. One I will partake in alongside the Tombs of a Masked Grind. And that is the Wilderness Boss Spindle. The cost and gear setup required to defeat this boss is fairly minimal, and the common drops received here are mostly fairly valuable. But that is not all, the boss also has a nearly 50 million valued rare drop in the Void Raker gem at a drop rate of 1 in 912. All of this really makes Spindle a great stable moneymaker, with also potential for massive spikes in profits. As it is the wilderness, we are risking some money, but with this current setup, we're only going to lose 365k if I die. And when it comes to my collection log, we have never killed Spindle before on this account, but we have 50 Vananadis KC way back in my group Iron Man days, but uh, let's get some KC stacked up for Spindle. No way! You must complete the medium tier of a wilderness diaries before you're allowed to entry? Right, they made that change. Well, I guess it is time for me to do some diaries. Seems like I have most of the requirements already done. We just need to start between a rock and do a couple of things. The very quick quest between a rock completed for, oh my god, a rune pickaxe? And we have arrived at the final step of the diary as well. Let's go ahead and charge an earth orb. And uh, that is the medium diary completed. Let's head back to the wilderness bosses. And we should now be able to enter. Yes, let's go. Let's start the spindle grind. Hopefully because of this change of the medium diary, we shouldn't really see any bots, which should help me grind this out a lot quicker. Ursan Chainmate is just slapping so hard for a rune 2 age sword for the first KC. Well, that did not take too long. I'm on 11 KC and I'm already dead. Okay, okay, you know what? We are back instantly first kill. One of the best drops, if not, I actually think that is the best common drop you can get. 427k. Guess we're making up for the lost money. I'm fully aware that the medium diary requirement to fight these bosses were actually a way to reduce bots, and it did help quite a lot. But there is another change they added, I believe, later on than that, because I don't remember this even being a thing, is a 3 second in combat teleport block. So even when fighting Spindle, you can't teleport away until you've been out of combat for 3 seconds. So when a PKR enters and teleblocks you every single time, you will not be able to instantly teleport away. Which makes it incredibly hard to escape. We have the first elite coming in. These are 1 in 100 drop rates here, so we should be seeing quite a lot of them actually. And these are drops from Tombs of a Masket as well, so I will be stacking up all of the ones we get from both these activities until the end. Oh no way! We got Fangs of Ananadis on 95 KC already. Ah, uh, these are actually kind of rare. They're 1 in 600 something, and they're worth not that much, so that kind of stings, honestly. 
Because of the new teleport away mechanic, I've not been able to escape PKers too much, and I've died like four times already in uh, 100 KC, which is this KC right here. I've lost like 2 million GP in deaths, but here is the loot, and we made 4.12 million so far, so at least we are making double that back. Apparently, the instant teleport away from the boss is locked behind hard wilderness diaries. They actually added all of these wilderness diary requirements to fight the wilderness bosses fairly recently, so I had no idea about this addition. But luckily, I actually have all the requirements already done for the hard diary, so I mean, let's just do it and I'll have instant teleport from Spindle. Oh, this is the first time I actually see the new Lava Dragon design. It looks so good. Look at these. This design is way better in my opinion. And there we go. That is the Hard Diary completed. And we can now actually instantly teleport from Spindle. So I won't get PK'd from now on, hopefully. It's so much easier now to teleport away. I feel like I'm never going to get PK'd again. I was even late on that one. Would you look at that? Exactly what I wanted. Another one in 600 worth 150k. <gasps> oh! <laughs> okay, uh, I did not expect a max hit. I'll take it though. 560k, always nice to get a random PK on the grind. You know what, I'm going to be honest, probably the only time we're going to be opening a loot key in this series. Let's see what we're going to get. 449k, we got the mystics, I'll take it. Well, since we completed the hard diary, I haven't died a single time, and we're now up to 300kc, which is actually the point where we're going to be taking a break and going back to TOA, and the last drop is Diamond Bolts Enchanted. This is all the loot we got from 300kc, exactly worth 13 million. And now, unfortunately, most of the profits is from the Void Waker gem, but we are definitely doing more spindle in this video, so we can hopefully get one later on. We are going to stay here at TOA for a bit longer. The two goals I want to reach before we leave back to Spindle again is a 350 raid as well as overall 40 TOAs completed. The first run, unfortunately, never lucky, but we have 22 expert raids left to do for that. So hopefully we should see at least one purple for us in that. No way. Yo, we got something on expert raid number 10. That is so lucky. We've had like a 45% chance so far to get a purple. And there we go. That's the first one. Let's just go ahead and get this open with. This animation is so nice. As you can see, by the way, on the drop rate, every raid is like 4.5% chance of getting a purple. So this is really lucky seeing this. What are we going to get? No! Oh, out of all the items I could have got, that is the second light bearer we've seen in this video. But this one, I actually get to profit out of 3 million GP. I mean, I'll take it. We were kind of lucky anyways for the first purple. I actually almost failed this run, 40 minute timer being on, 45 seconds off it. Can we get a back-to-back -back though? That is the question. Never uh, lucky. We have the first elite from TOA coming in, and the drop rate of this just says it varies on the wiki. I guess it depends on how high difficulty you do this on, so kind of hard to really evaluate how rare that is, but we hope to see quite a lot of them, I guess. You know what? 466k for chest number 30 of the grind. Not too bad. This is all the loot that we got so far from 30 overall TOAs, and of course we have the light bearer as the only unique so far. I feel like it's time. We have done so many expert raids at this point that I feel like it's time to upgrade to the 350 raid, which is the same invocation, except we are now adding Insanity, which makes the final phase of the last boss a lot faster and hectic. Besides giving me higher purple chance, we will also upon completion now get the Masori Crafting Kit, the first cosmetic of the raid. Okay, we made it to the final phase, the final part of the Warden fight. I'm honestly kind of nervous. I haven't done Insanity in a very long time. Let's see how fast this is. Okay, first one. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. It's easier than I remember it being. No! No! I'm so dead! Ah, oh, you can't miss, like, a single tick on that skull face. And I th I'm not sure if that was my fault or if I had ping, but ah, oh, that is so unfortunate. I'll take the blame. But we made it back. The comeback is always greater than the setback. And that is a 350 expert rate completed on Gary Penny in 39 minutes and 30 seconds with a 40 minute limit. So we definitely were very close to actually not making it. Now the question is, are we going to get rewarded with a purple 
No, we are not. But of course, we have the guaranteed cosmetic of the Masori kit. And there it is, already coming up on the collection log as well. And with the help of a needle, once again, we are making the Masori Assembler, which actually doesn't look too good with my current gear setup. The uh, previous one was kind of a bit more aesthetically pleasing. But for the future Masori gear, this is the perfect fit. Actually, quite a big update on my attack training. We have got 1.5 million attack experience from Spindle and T-Way so far, and that is 90 attack achieved. Quite a big milestone, and 118 combat as well. Oh, no way! Yo, we got another purple solo. We've actually been kind of lucky. I Yes, I'm like double the drop rate for getting purples right now, so that is awesome, but hopefully... We do not get another ring? Come on, please. Not a third ring. What is this? Come on, man. Three light bearers. I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. But three million for the most common unique you can get. Unfortunate. Expert raid number 26. Already another purple? Two raids between. Okay, this time no light bearer. Come on, don't show me a light bearer. That's all I ask for. Come on. <laughs> Why can I only get light bearers? I've been so lucky with purples. And I'll, I'll admit that. I'll be the first one to admit that. But only getting light bearers? Come on. But with this raid completion, we have now hit 29 experts and 11 normal for 40 overall raids. And this is where we're going to be doing another break for Spindle. And let's see if we can end off with a purple again. Not this time. I'm not that lucky, but uh, let's go ahead and go back to Spindle and see if we can get a Void Waker piece or just overall good items. I was waiting for that. A collection log slot as well. Dragon Pickaxe, one in 358, which we got on 397 cases, a bit above the drop rate. Oh, no way. A second Dragon Pickaxe, five KC later on 402. I mean, one million drop, I'll take it. That's like one third of a light bearer. Oh. My. God. We got the Venonatus Spiderling on Spindle on 474kc. You know what? It has absolutely no value, but it looks so cool. It's one of the best pets in the game, in my opinion. You can actually metamorphosize this pet as well, giving you the old model before they actually updated all the wilderness bosses. And it looks really cool. Gives me some nostalgia as well. Such a cool pet. You know what? Looking at my collection log now, we're only missing the Treasonous Ring, the Dragon Two-Hander, and the Void Waker Gem. Which in the last, like, what? 430kc is maybe possible to actually complete. We just keep getting these Dragon Pickaxes. I had a bit of a heart attack. I thought it was a PK, but we're good. But on this round of spindle, the dragon pickaxe was the last item we got, and that is now 600 spindle KC. And this is all the loot that we've got so far, nearly 30 million in value. But on the last 300, we're going to be doing a bit later. If we get a Void Waker gem, we can easily double that. Before we jump into the final TOA runs of this episode, I want to talk about the rocks on this wall. On top of this hill is an herb patch, and as I'm doing herb runs quite frequently, this shortcut will save a lot of time in the long run if I have access to it. But I can't use it unless I've completed the Fremenic Hard Diary, but luckily I have all the requirements ready to go for its completion. So let's get it done and make my herb runs a bit more efficient. And that should be the Medium Diary completed, and we have a system update in 34 minutes. Can I complete the Hard Diary within that time as well? I guess we'll see. With the 21 minutes left to spare, that is the Hard Diary completed. We now have everything we need. Let's go get the rewards. Now, unfortunately, the Fremenic boots are not really that useful until you get the elite ones that gives infinite teleports for Vorkath, but we at least get 7.5k agility and another 15k. That's uh, saving probably at least like 30 minutes of agility training, and I guess these boots fit pretty well with proselytes. Let's go ahead and reap the benefits of our labor. Let's click on the stony basalt now, teleport to the troll stronghold. Oh, we're already on top? We don't even have to climb now. That's so nice. Oh, look how quick this is. Before you had to run through the whole stronghold. But it's time to finish off the last TOA runs and hopefully we can get something better than light bearers this time. A white light for the first one. We're going to be doing 10 raids overall, so 9 more to go. 
And we're going to be ending on 50 overall tier ways in this video. So hopefully we can get something good in these last nine raids. Yo, look at this loot. Gold coins, gold ore, and gold bars. So much gold, and it's still only worth 78,000 GP. I guess we know why, why they have all of these in the background now. Oh my god, yes, yes, yeah, I have been waiting for this. Jewel of the Sun, we were actually lucky getting the first jewel being the absolutely best one by far. Oh, I can't wait to use this. Let me show you. So let's go ahead and use this on the Keris. Let's attach it. And that is now Keris Partisan of the Sun. And of course, this is most useful for its special attack, giving you basically the Ambrosia effect at the cost of prayer points. So just to show you guys how this works, I'm now at 4 HP, I have 63 prayers, so if we click the special attack, we get 118 hit points for 50 prayer points. That is ridiculously strong. And honestly, it's a kind of a must item if you want to do 500s in the future. But here we are, with the last raid I did a 330 for this one, and the Karis Partisan is extremely good when doing all these raids. But this is the last one, we just hit 50 overall raids, you can see that by all the combat achievements. And let's see, with a 5.21% chance, are we going to get a purple on the last raid of the video? Let's slowly creep up, please. Yeah! Oh my god! Yo! We actually got a purple! That is so n- Oh my god, okay. I'm so happy about this. Let's go ahead and see what we get. I'm so excited. The last purple of the video. Please, just anything but a ring. I'll take a ward. Just anything. Are you kidding me? We end the raid on a purple and getting only rings the entire video. I mean, I guess it's only fitting. Ending the video in the way that we started it, I guess. But this is it. This is everything that we got from 50 Tombs of Amasket. 27 million GP. The last saving grace for making a lot of money this episode is going to be Spindom. Let's do the last 300 KC. So far, it's been the most uneventful round of Spindle. We're at 150 KC this round, meaning 750 overall with that KC. And we got absolutely nothing so far, not even an elite clue scroll. And the trend has kept itself up. We only have 5 KC left after this one, 895 overall. And it's not looking good. I don't think we're going to be getting a Void Waker gem, unfortunately. But the money still is pretty decent from this boss. And here we go. This is the final KC of Spindle. Number 900 for some red spider eggs. Actually, not a bad last drop. 134k. And lastly, if we have a look at the collection log. I unfortunately ended up getting no more collection log slots at all since the pet. Overall from TOA and Spindle, we ended up getting 6 elites. So let's go ahead and start opening these and see if we can get some masters or some good rewards overall. 89k and we have the first master. Master completed. Let's go ahead and open the last 4 elites. See if we can get any collection log slots, any more masters, anything good. Oh, we have a royal crown, another collection log slot, but no more masters. And we took the master casket out of the bank. Let's go ahead and open this one for a unique item, black demon mask. But oh, 600k, actually not bad at all for a master. Every single item that I got from TOA and the spindle has been sold for 63 million cash. And if we now add this to the bank, our overall value is 502 million. And our herb tab, which I have been keeping up with doing herb runs as much as possible, is now at 8,448 herbs worth nearly 27 million. That means overall in this video, we gained 18 million profits. Before we end the video, I want to thank Joachim Frank, Oxyfi, A Heroic Bear, Zoe Noel, Kunesor, and Franix for supporting the channel as members. You can also do so for as low as $2.5 a month and get access to a couple of emotes used in the comment section or when I am live. Even though we only made 18 million profit this time, the next episode coming up is going to guarantee at least 200 million in profit. I hope to see you there and until next time guys. Take care.